Hi there. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Regina and in this video I'm going to give you guys a full tour of my garden in August. But before we get into it, go ahead and click that like button. Click that subscribe button for more gardening content. I am growing in North Texas Zone 8A. And of course, if you know more gardeners who you think would find this content helpful, then of course, share it with them as well. Now, let's get into it. Okay, so it is nearly the end of August and I have not done a full tour of my garden since July. So I wanted to make sure I got that done for you guys so you can see how the garden has changed in the last month. Because it's been about a month since the last full tour. Well, today is August the... 25th. Um, so we're about three days past getting a lot of rain. Rain started maybe Sunday night, um, the 21st, and lasted the 21st, the 22nd, and then we even got a little bit on Tuesday, the 23rd. So we are finally, looks like done with the rain for now. And it was, I mean, great for the garden here where I live on the south side of the Dallas Metroplex. But there was some flooding and things like that, too, in the city. We got, essentially, a whole summer's worth of rain in one day. Now, I am definitely grateful for the rain. My garden has loved it. It still hasn't dried out. And it looks like the temperatures, like we might actually be done with the 100-degree temperatures for now. It hasn't actually gotten past, like, 90 or so this week so far. So that is really exciting to have just a bit of a break from the heat because it has been as you guys have heard me complain multiple times it's been pretty brutal out here so i'm excited to be able to get out into the garden and not immediately be breaking into a sweat so i'm going to give you guys a full tour because lots has changed since you've seen this entire thing so i want to give you guys a full tour of the garden i'm going to start um as i always do on the south well as i usually do not always <laughs> on the southernmost end of my garden and work my way north um and show you what's cracking. So I am going to be doing this video mostly handheld. So I have a little handle here that helps me to hold the video as steady as possible without like a fancy stabilizer. So let's take a look. So looking at my garden from south to north, the first bed here is my bed that's full of southern peas. And actually I have two beds full of southern peas right next to each other. And right now, they actually look great. I actually just picked some of these peas this morning in this, for this bed, I have some purple hull southern peas um, and a few other kinds. In the other bed, I have some white acre southern peas and some zipper cream peas. And these are peas that do really well in the summer. They love the heat and they have produced okay for me the i say they love the heat to be honest though that quick transition from spring to summer didn't seem like it was amazing for them but now they are really really doing well and actually by this time i usually have a lot of disease or at least last year i did on my plants um some sort of wilt or rust or something and i actually do not have that this year and probably because last year in april and may we got a lot of rain and this year, we've gotten almost none, or very, very little. So I'm guessing that is why. So there are lots of peas on these plants, as you can see. And I've already picked um, a bunch today. So in the coming weeks, I expect to get a lot of peas here. Now, pest-wise, I have noticed there are lots of ants. There are ants all over this garden. But lots of ants, and I've also noticed some caterpillars in my peas, which isn't really where they usually are, but there are some, not a ton, but I have seen some holes in my beans and I've seen a few. So I'm gonna do some pest control in my garden tomorrow. And one of the things I'm gonna be spraying is BT and I'm gonna spray these beds with it um, because it'll help with the caterpillars. But as far as the filled peas go, look at all those blooms, look at all these peas, they are looking amazing. And here's the second bed. Some holes in the leaves. I also have some grasshoppers here in the garden um, that I've done a number on these, but they seem to be okay. And both of these beds are four foot by eight foot, by the way. And they have just disrespecting the space in between, as you can see, they're just growing. And you know what, that's okay. 
Now, these are the beds. This last bed on the end, this is where I grew my onions um, this past season. And I am planning to put them either here or here this coming season as well. But since this summer has not been amazing for production, um, I'm going to let my plants grow as far into the fall as they can. I don't need to put onions outside until December um, or January, so I have plenty of time to let these guys go, and I'm sure I'll get a freeze, most likely get a freeze before then. Next up, this is my bed where the past few years has been used for brassicas, so a lot of my spring and fall crops have gone in this bed. Right now, growing here, I actually planted some peanuts in this bed. I literally got some peanuts um, from Alabama and got them mostly for eating. But I decided to plant some of them because I just kind of want to see how peanuts grow. And so that's what these plants are. And peanuts grow, they grow really interestingly. Like these little blooms, see that little one? Let's see, that little yellow bloom? Those turn into the peanuts, but what they do is the blooms, like, dig into the ground and they turn into the peanuts. So I'm just letting these guys go. I just wanted to see, you know, if I could grow peanuts and how they grew. And so far they're doing okay. Some of the plants are doing better than others, but it's been interesting. Other things I have grown in this bed are from spring, like this big old curly kale plant. Um, lots of holes <laughs> in these leaves. During the summer, that's when the, the moths come in and lay their eggs and you have caterpillars eating up your greens. And you can keep your plants pretty good without getting a bunch of holes in them if you spray them regularly with BT. I just didn't, and I usually don't during the summer. Um, you know, I just kind of let what happen, let what's going to happen happen, eat other things during the summer, and that's kind of what I did. Early in the summer I did, but I just did not keep up with it. So look at these. These are collards. They're eaten up. And it's not just um, grasshoppers, to be honest. It's also some Japanese beetles. Or I think these are Japanese beetles. Whatever that is. I'm going to come grab with my gloves. I don't have gloves on right now, but I'm going to come grab them and smush them. Um, and here's some dino kale. It looks amazing, but it's starting to get eaten up. Caterpillars and beetles. And also in this bed, I have my gigantic Thai basil. Love Thai basil. I've been using this so much this summer in my cooking. And then here I have some mustard greens that have gone, or some lettuce that has gone to seed. Um, some mustard greens, other lettuce that has gotten to seed. So it's a mixture of some spring and some um, summer stuff in this bed. And then here, look, more collards that have lots of caterpillar holes in them, as well as more kale. So, what I'm planning to do, probably tomorrow morning, before I head out of town for the weekend, is do a little pest control, and what I'll be doing is just removing all of these leaves off of these plants, or all the ones that are beaten up, not every single leaf. Most, all the leaves that are eaten up on these plants, these collards, and also these kale over here, and I'll move it down to the stalk, and then I'll spray it down with BT, throw all those leaves away, and it'll grow new leaves. So I don't have to plant a whole bunch of new ones for the fall. I still will plant some new plants, but I don't have to pull those plants out. Um, kale, collards, all of those are biennial, so they produce, they go to seed their second year. And so since this is the first year, I can get them, and I can keep them all through winter. If we get a deep freeze, like down into the 20s, I'll need to cover them for them to survive, or I could let them go. But, um, you know, they can take a light freeze, and these same plants can be my fall crop as well. So, you don't have to pull out your spring stuff if you have space for it. Other things around in this bed, there's more peanuts. Um, I have thyme here. I've had this since last year. This plant is, I want to say, about a year and a half old. Um, and also some lavender here as well. And I've actually used some of this to make tea, my first lavender tea, and it was really good. And also you can see zinnias as well. So lots of things happening here. Now since I'm back here on this wall, I'll go ahead and show you guys this. Here is where I planted my green beans, but the green beans have not had a good go of it. Because of our weather, because it got so hot so quickly, I did not really get any green beans. 
and although I wanted this wall to be covered in beans, it did not happen because the plants just struggling. But they are finally starting to like grow and look nice. I mean, they actually did start growing, um, but then the heat just kind of took them out. So they're starting to grow and look really nice. I might throw in a few seeds, um, but I'm starting to get blooms. So I think I'm gonna get some beans for the fall. That's what I'm hoping. But I might plant a few more seeds in here just to um, increase the likelihood that I get a good crop. And the same goes here. Here I have long beans and they did okay, but they just weren't, I don't know. Long beans usually do okay in the heat. This is my second year growing them. But um, last year they did fine but maybe they just didn't get established well enough before the heat came. I have some here that I need to pick that I didn't because they were covered in ants. <laughs> and then here are my last two. See, this one actually looks really good. This one is just regular Kentucky Wonder Pole beans. This bed is looking good. And it's got, it has a lot of blooms on it, so I'm expecting to get a good fall crop off of this one. And then down there are my red long beans. And they have actually done well. I've gotten several long beans from there, so. Interesting how that goes. Okay, so we just looked at this bed and the fence over there. So now we're gonna take a look over here. This bed, it's a four by 12, and this is actually my strawberry bed, even though it's hard to tell right now. The grass has gotten kind of out of control. I have not done as good a job as I should have of pulling it out. It just, it's almost like it wasn't there and then it was. So I have a lot of work to do with this bed over the winter because I'm gonna pull up the strawberry plants. I'll replant them here, but I'll pull them all up, separate them, um, and get them, get them back <laughs> looking nice. It just has been kind of a rough season. But I have strawberry plants in here. I expect them to start producing again for fall. Some of them are struggling because of the heat, especially the newer ones, but it looks like most of them are kind of making a comeback. And then also I have these zinnias actually pulled out most of them and this is just one plant right here so or one plant here one plant there this is just two plants and then this is like two plants because it turns out once you start cutting the zinnias back they grow back with the vengeance and they branch off so over the winter I'll pull all of these out but right now I'm kind of enjoying them because they're so pretty on the other side here I also have my mint and oregano. These are two containers. No, they're right next to each other. But these have done well for me. I've had these for more than a year. Grown from seed, of course. And um, yeah, they're doing fine. The bees love the mint, the blooming mint. So it's something that keeps them happy. These are happy, I'm happy. Now this next bed, these are, this is my indeterminate tomato bed seen this one before if you've seen my videos um, on the side here I planted some wax bush beans because I found some seeds at Dollar Tree so I planted these a while ago I haven't gotten any beans yet but they're growing okay um, and then here I have several different varieties of tomato I just in my last video pruned these back a ton I just came in here with my pruners and just went crazy um, just getting ready for fall so that they can start pumping out some more tomatoes and they were just getting unwieldy but if you look closely there are a ton of blooms on these plants does not want to focus in on that okay um, there are a ton of blooms so I'm hopeful that for fall I'll get a ton of tomatoes I still need to maybe do a little more trimming and pulling up because it's still kind of wild, but I've gotten a lot of tomatoes so far this season from this bed and I'm hoping for more. Also in this bed, I do have some herbs. There's some basil on the other side and here I have parsley and shiso. So herbs are something I love growing and I just like to squeeze them in wherever I can fit them because it's just really nice that whenever I go to cook something and I need some sort of seasoning or whatever, I can literally just walk out to the garden with my scissors and just grab what I need. And herbs are something that I just never have to buy anymore for the most part. 
Then I have a few containers here also. This one has some cinnamon basil and parsley growing. Then over here, just have a few flowers. These are snapdragons. I had some daisies here. My daisies never bloom, so I don't know what's up with that. And then I wanted to point out here, I have these tree collards that I grew from seeds that I purchased from the tree collard project, and I have no idea where to put them. I think I'm going to plant at least one of them right here. Um, I just got to figure out where to put them. I, had them in, I grew some in containers last year, and they ended up dying because I didn't cover them when we had a deep freeze. Um, but, I mean, obviously I could just do better and cover them. But I want to plant them in the ground because if I can start growing, you know, if I can have a couple of tree collared plants that grow and that do well, then that will eliminate my need for some of my seasonal collards and kale that I grow because I'll have my tree collards. And they're perennials that can last years and years. So, see how that goes. I still got to figure out where to put those. So something else I wanted to mention was before the rain came, obviously we had it in the forecast, I came out on Sunday and I put fertilizer down in every bed because I hadn't done it for about a month and a half, so it was time to fertilize. And as you probably know, if you're using granular fertilizer, the best time to do it is before you have to water it in or put it down before rain. So I put down fertilizer throughout pretty much the entire garden except for the fruit trees. I didn't get them, um, I don't think. but fertilize everything else every container <laughs> which you have to fertilize more frequently of course um, I put fertilizer down in my blueberry container the acid loving fertilizer and then I used my standard garden tone um, I used some of the miracle grow shake and feed that I had left over um, that I found under my sink I used that till that was gone and then I put garden tone everywhere so the garden um, we'll soon also be seeing the impacts of having that really fresh fertilizer along with all that rain. It's, it's happy that it got that rain. I could tell. It just looks amazing out here, even though not everything is perfect. But just wanted to make sure I included that. I did put down fertilizer on Sunday. So, so the next bed on our tour is the determinate tomato bed. Um, you saw in my last video that I planted these determinate tomato plants and they already are looking great. I got them planted like the day before the rain um, came or a couple days before the rain came and they are already looking nice. They got a little bit of pest damage on them but you know what that's that's just what it's like in August. The pests are like kind of getting worse <laughs> um, but the plants themselves like they already look three times as good as they did when I planted them because they were looking kind of raggedy but yeah they're looking nice and I have some zinnias popping up right there so I need to remove those because there's definitely not gonna be space and but yeah look at all these tomato plants looking good this purple basil here has been here and it actually never got big but since I pulled out the other tomato plants my other determinate uh, my other round of determinate tomatoes it has now grown a lot because it's gotten more sun and it needs to be staked but I'm just gonna let that live its life because I love basil so much also in this bed I have spicy basil and the spicy basil is having a few little basil babies as you can see down there from it going to seed and those seeds landing and growing um, and then this one is either lemon or lime basil yeah one of those but yeah, there's lots of basil in my garden, and I make lots of pesto with it. So this is the determinate tomato bed, where I'm finally going to get a fall crop of tomatoes, so I'm very excited about that. Next up is the pepper bed, and I'm too close, so let me move to another location. So my pepper bed right now is looking pretty much like I expected it to. That's how it looked last year. Very, very full. I grow my peppers pretty close together. Um, so once they start filling out, they really start filling out. Here, these are, I believe these are California Wonder bell peppers on the end here. I actually had in the storm, with all that rain and wind we had, this actually broke off the top of the plant right here. But it still has plenty of branches that are growing so that's fine um but yeah i have a variety of peppers 
growing from sweet. I have Cubanelles. I have Marconi's. I have Purple Beauty. I'm trying to look and see if there's any fruit, but I just picked peppers. I picked a couple this morning and then the other day, but I have lots of blooms coming. So a nice little burst of peppers is coming through. Now that this weather has started to cool down, my plants are kind of going crazy. But yeah, there's some peppers in there. These are Marconi peppers. They're really, really prolific sweet pepper. But yeah, so lots happening in the pepper sphere. And at the end of the pepper bed, I have eggplant. This pepper plant is kind of grown wild. But here is eggplant. This is fairy tale. There are a few little baby ones there. I actually just harvested some eggplant yesterday and cooked it in my air fryer. Here, some more eggplant. And these plants have, it looks like aphids. So I'm actually in my pest control quest. Gonna get out here and take care of this. I'll probably use some neem oil for the aphids. And then this is my other eggplant. This one is a Rosita. It's getting pretty big, actually. But I don't know what these little little bugs are. Let's see if it'll focus. Yeah, I don't know what those are. Those have to go too. So some work to do. But that is the pepper bed. And so the pepper bed also is the bed where the cucumber is growing. So you can see my arched trellis here. This is a cattle panel trellis. Two eight foot cattle panels pulled together with um, zip ties at the top. And it has held up really well. I've grown watermelon on this trellis. And this season, lots of um, Armenian cucumbers. I actually have two types of cucumbers growing, Armenian and like Sumter or Straight A, I can never remember. But what I also have are pests. Look at that. Those are aphids. And I'm just gonna trim. Look, I have so many and I just noticed them. So I don't know where they came from all of a sudden, but I'm just gonna come in here with my um, pruners and trim a whole, all of this stuff off it's gonna be really hard to get all of them off. But it's just like with the rain, all of a sudden they just came out of nowhere. I just noticed them here yesterday. So I'm just gonna prune it all off because this these cucumbers are going crazy anyway, so I don't think it'll hurt them to be pruned back. And I'd rather do that and then spray for whatever's left. But I gotta, I gotta spray, because this is, I mean, I, I gotta prune, because this is out of control. But also in here, as you can see, the Armenian cucumbers are prolific as ever. I have like five on my counter, and I've got like six in here that I need to pick. Um, so if you want to make sure you get some cucumbers in a warm climate, grow these Armenian ones. Like, look at this. I don't want to get under here because I saw a bunch of aphids. I don't want them in my hair. But look at that. Cucumber. Cucumber. Gigantic one. I must have missed that one. Cucumber. They are friggin' everywhere cucumber so definitely worth growing you'll definitely get some cucumbers um, but I've been juicing them using them in smoothies I don't know what to do with all these cucumbers I'm gonna have to like make some pickles I guess but that is my pepper bed and my arch trellis also in here I do have watermelon growing and some Sharon Tice melon I've harvested a couple of them but I haven't seen any in a while so I don't know what's going on there, but we'll see if I get any more. So here, these are my nectarine trees. They're supposed to be bonsai or bonanza patio peach trees, but that was what I ordered, but they were not. They're nectarine trees. Um, I've already harvested the nectarines for this season. Most of them were like eaten up by some insect. There weren't very many, but most of them were eaten up, so we didn't really get to eat them. I think I found one that was edible, but they've grown a lot. So here's hoping for a better season next year. I got these trees spring of 2021, so I've had them about, you know, a little more than a year. 
and I mean overall they're doing okay in these containers that they're growing in. Here are two of my blueberry, well here's a blueberry plant actually, it's just one blueberry plant. This one is a, I don't want to call it, oh it's a powder blue, powder blue blueberry plant. It did grow some blueberries this year and they were delicious, it didn't grow a lot of them, but it has put on a lot of growth and that's what I'm, let me move it. That is what I'm really excited to see, because I know if the plant is putting on a lot of growth, while it's young, you're not going to get a lot of fruit. But if it's putting on a lot of growth, that means in the future, you'll get fruit. So I'm looking forward to these guys giving me more. And here's another container with herbs in it. I have sage. Sage grows so much, and I'm not even sure what to do with it. I still have a whole jar of sage from last year, and I only really use it at Thanksgiving. So, um, But it is nice to have in the garden. And then in here I have some thyme and some rosemary. Next bed is my okra bed. Okra is a really, really fun plant to grow in a hot climate because it's just easy. I mean, it's easy to grow, but it does produce a lot. Like here, I just harvested okra yesterday. And look, I have three fully grown pods right there that I'm going to have to harvest. I think I'll wait till the morning. Um, but yeah, it's growing well. I did have some fall over after the storms that we had. Um, I've never had okra fall over like this, so I need to figure out a way to prop it up. Because that's weird. But I have plenty of okra in here to harvest. I only harvest okra wearing my gloves and generally long sleeves because it makes my skin itch. Um, so be careful of that if you're growing okra. But otherwise, I have lots in here to harvest. And we literally had okra with dinner yesterday. So okra is fun because I always grow enough for an entire year where we can have okra as often as we want. And I love it. So I enjoy that. And I'm just surprised by how much okra is out here. I literally just picked this stuff. But if you're growing a lot of okra like this, then you really are going to have to pick it every day or every other day in order to stay on top of it. I mean, look at this. There's a pod I obviously miss because look how big that is. And you have to pick it because okra doesn't, it's not good if it gets too big. It gets woody. So back here, these are my tomatillo plants. I have gotten zero tomatillos so far this year. The heat has been really tough on them, but they are doing better. And look how much they're growing. They have lots of blooms and have two different kinds. I have the purple and the green. But I just noticed that this one, I have a full on ant bed infestation in here. So I'm going to hit this guy with some, um, what is it? Spinosad. That has worked in other containers, in other places where I've had ants, like ant beds. Spinosad soaking it. That has worked. So I'm going to do that in here because this is literally like a full on ant bed. The rain has brought out so many ants, like they are everywhere in this garden. It's kind of driving me crazy because I really, really, I should respect nature because I love to garden, but I hate ants. Almost as much as I hate grasshoppers. So, I'm gonna have to take care of that. But otherwise, my tomatillos are looking good. I can't wait to get some so I can make some salsa verde. And then here are a few more of my blueberries in containers. This one is a Titan blueberry. Here in this container is another powder blue. See, they're turning a little yellow. I think because I waited too long to fertilize them, but I did hit them with fertilizer before the storm came. I might have to hit them again because it might have washed out because we got so much rain. Um, yeah, it's powder blue. This one is a, this one is two. Ochlocone and Vernon, I believe. And here is a premier blueberry plant. All of my blueberry varieties that I'm growing are rabbit eye blueberries um, because they do well in this climate. And I have lots of varieties because blueberries need to cross pollinate. Rabbit eye blueberries at least do. But they're looking good. It's really important when you're growing blueberries that you keep them healthy during this season even after you know you've gotten the fruit from them because the fruiting buds on blueberry plants develop where the leaf buds were 
and if it loses its leaves early in the season it won't develop the fruiting buds for next season so it is really important like here I have some rust or something I'm gonna have to hit this with a with a um, copper fungicide to hopefully keep that from spreading and getting bad and causing the plant to lose its leaves okay this one is my ground cherry plant one of them and it is donezo I guess the rain raw I don't know it struggled all season with ants and everything and fortunately it's done and then this is my other ground cherry plant and it is on its way out and it also has a huge ant bed oh my god these ants look at that humongous ant bed I hate ants and mushrooms which I know they're just they're not bad but this thing is covered in ants so now on to more of the perennials in my garden. This bed is full of perennials and some corn. Let's start over here. Here we have a container and this is my gooseberry plant. I did not get any gooseberries this season, unfortunately. I really wanted some because I still have never had a gooseberry, but that's how it goes, I guess. So, I, yeah, but hopefully next season I'll get a gooseberry from this. And the plant itself is doing fine in this container, but we'll see how it goes. So here we have one of my favorite things in my garden, and these are my muscadine vines. I grew up going to visit Alabama, and we would always pick these. We called them bullets. They were wild. We'd find them wild in fields and stuff and growing on fences. Um, I have them growing in containers, as you can see here, and on these are two eight-foot cattle panels that I have attached to T-posts, and they're doing fine holding them up. Generally, people grow muscadines with just one arm in each direction. Um, I did not because I wanted two different vines, and I have enough space to just stretch them out, so I just grew them kind of the way I wanted to, <laughs> and I do have some fruit on one of them. This vine gave me fruit, this one. This one over here did not. Now, I actually have some and they're starting to ripen. This one, it's pretty much ripe. It's a bronze one. You can tell it's ripe, ripeness by the color. I want my camera to focus, focus. There we go. Um, you can tell the ripeness by the color and the texture. It's a little bit squishy and it's bronze and not green. So this one is good, but it's got something on it. Which makes me kind of afraid to just bite it. So I'm going to try another one. <laughs> so, there we go. There we go. So I'm going to take a bite out of this one. Okay, so the thing to know is that muscadines do, they're grapes, they're a type of grape, and they do have seeds, which, you know, it's annoying if you're used to eating grapes without seeds. But the flavor of them, when they are ripe, I would take muscadines over like green or purple table grapes any day. The flavor, it's just different. I don't know how to describe it if you've never had one. It definitely has a grape, a grapeness to it, but it's just different. Um, and they grow well here in this area. Um, they just do better. They don't, they're not prone to the same diseases as other grapes would be growing them here. They're native to southern climates, etc. So that's why I grow them and because I always wanted to try it. So this is my first year getting fruit from them. Now the only thing is, is that these muscadines were supposed to be cowart. That is what I purchased <laughs> and that is what they were labeled as. But they are not cowart because cowarts are purple, not bronze. So I don't know what variety this is, um, but you know what it's producing. They're delicious, so I'm just gonna let it go. I guess I don't have a choice anyway. I mean, I bought them a year ago, more than a year ago, <laughs> but oh well. That's how it is sometimes with fruiting plants. Like you, you just have to trust that you're getting what you asked for. But all right, so I'm gonna give you guys a closer look at some of these muscadines. So, see, muscadines grow in clusters, but not in the same kind of clusters as. You know, the big gigantic clusters like table grapes. Let's see. Clusters might have just a few fruits on them. Let's see. Ooh, that one looks great. Mm. 
Oh, that's so good. But yeah, so there are plenty of grapes on here and they're starting to ripen. They'll be ripening a little at a time now through fall. Okay, so in this raised bed I have here, this one is a <clears throat> like a horseshoe shaped bed. It's 12 feet on this side. It's like 12 feet on each side. And then a horseshoe cut out. Here I have corn that I planted. Um, last month I want to say I planted this in July. And it looks terrible. Look at this. This rain, it was like the heat plus the rain just did a number. It is a bust. I have some ears forming but they look disgusting. I'm just going to pull it all out, cut my losses, and I'll probably plant my beets here again. Here, I planted some basil. As you know, I have herbs everywhere, so some basil that's grown all out of its bed. Um, parsley in here. Shiso. This shiso is the same size as the one over there in my tomato bed, except this one has grown like crazy because it had full sun. And then over here I also, like it's kind of a mess. This is Thai basil in here. And then I have pepper plants. But then my raspberry plants have kind of started growing crazy. I knew they would, <laughs> but not quite as quickly. So I need to get in here. Let me show you guys this from another angle. But here's what they look like. So the blackberries and the raspberry. I have my trellis system here, but I have not tied them up recently. So now they look kind of crazy. But now that the weather is cooling down, I'll be able to spend time out here, not just, you know, at dawn and sunset um, and be able to do some work. Because look at this. These are my blackberries. They have fallen all on the ground. It is just a mess over here. But they're still producing. So, my raspberries in here are, I have to be careful because the raspberries have thorns and the blackberries do not, but the raspberries are producing right now. These are Caroline Red, and then on the other side are Double Gold raspberries, and then all of my blackberries are Prime Arc Freedom. And so I let, I just let these guys get too tall. Look at that. I mean, that's insane. And I've pruned them back more than once this summer because that helps them to produce more, but it has just not been enough. And also I haven't done a good job at tying them back to the trellis. So that's my bad. The month of August has definitely been, I've been out in the garden, but just not as much as I, I really should have. So this is my blackberry area, currently losing its mind. Now in here, so here you can see a lot of raspberries forming. Look at that. And some blackberries forming. Because these Primark Freedom are prime cane fruiting berries, so they fruit on first year canes and second year canes. And most of this growth um, are first year canes. The second year canes I've pruned back and these are new canes that have grown. So I'll get berries on these essentially up until the freeze which is really nice. And so I also have this gigantic pepper plant. This is a, um, orange juice sweet pepper. Look at this, I got, okay, this is blackberry. How's that all the way over here? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm in over the raspberry. Okay, but orangey sweet peppers that I'm not harvesting right now because I actually have to use my pruners to get them off or I'll break the plant. But there are lots of fruit on this plant. Look at that. Okay, then. And then I also have a purple basil in here that is kind of falling over the storm. All right, so now I'm like in the middle of the horseshoe, so I'm gonna step out, show you guys what we have going on here. 
Now here is the side of this bed where I have my mini orchard. So I have two cherry trees right here. This, this little planter is in here. My husband put it in here as he was cutting the grass that I need to pull out because I didn't have anything growing in it. But um, yeah, two cherry trees, one Lapins, one Stella that have gotten a lot of growth this season. So I'm expecting fruit next season. I'm just letting them grow and then I'll be pruning these back quite a bit this summer. Absolutely. And then here, the next two trees, these are peach trees. I'm going to insert a little image to show you guys what these look like when I planted them. These were sticks. I mean, sticks, y'all. Now it's almost as tall as my house. Well, this is the side of the house. Um, but yeah, they're tall, tall, tall. And I'm seeing a few ants, which means there's probably ants down here. I just need to treat everything for ants, don't I? Um, but yeah, these are peach trees right here. And then here, the next two are plum trees, also that have gotten gigantic and that were also little sticks. And then here are apple trees. This one is a Granny Smith. And then this one here is, oh, what is down there? Oh God, y'all, it's a toad. It's cute. Look at that little baby toad. Oh, come on camera zoom. Camera won't zoom because it's dark. There he is. That freaked me out. I don't like little animals or insects, but I'm okay with them living here. See, that is an apple tree. All right. <laughs> but yeah, so this is my mini backyard orchard. I'm planning to keep these trees small. Um, but this is their first year with me, most of them. The cherry trees I did get last year. Um, but the other ones I purchased just as bare root trees and they have grown so well. And over the winter, I will prune them back, prune them to a hopefully like more of an open shape and hopefully get a good amount of fruit production from them. But right now, they've gotten so big, it's kind of wild. And then here are my mulberry trees. These are the ones I've been waiting to plant all year. They're still in buckets. If, and I was gonna build a raised bed for them, but I think I've changed my mind. I'm just gonna plant them into the ground right here in this area and just put them there and be done with it and let them grow so that they can be happy and produce some delicious fruits. And these are dwarf mulberry trees, but they're already, you know, I guess about five, six feet tall. But yeah. Thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. I hope it wasn't too shaky for you. Y'all, I'm working on it, I promise. <laughs> but I enjoyed showing you guys the garden, even though there are lots of pests, lots of crazy things going on. That is just what having a garden is like. Not everything is going to be perfect. Um, there are gonna be insects. I'm okay with reptiles and amphibians. No rodents though. I haven't seen any this season. Thank God. Um, grateful for that. I can deal with a toad and I saw a green, a green anole um, lizard or whatever. I'm fine with those. They can hang out, eat as many bugs as they want. As long as there are no mice, I'm good. And so far, that's been the case. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for, wa for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Please, of course, comment below if you have any questions about anything that I am growing or anything like that. Please comment below. I am happy to respond to those. My channel is fortunately still small enough to where I can take the time and respond to every comment. Um, and of course, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're looking for more gardening content. Once again, I am growing in North Texas Zone 8A, just outside of Dallas. And um, yeah, share this video with other gardeners you know. But until we meet again, have a great one. Bye.